please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So if you look at any market in BetAngel, you'll see these numbers at the top. And this is the book over round. And the book over round will always be um, 100, over 100% 100 on the back side. In fact, what I should do is just, this is what you would normally see on the Betfair screen. Um, it will always be 100% on the back side and always under 100% on the lay side. This number up here represents um, the chance of any one of these selections going on to win the race. So of course, you know, we've got a six runner race here. There are six horses. One of those horses is going to win the race. So there's certainty that one of those will win and therefore excluding dead heats, of course. Uh, and therefore the book percentage is at 100%. You'll find the same in football, in tennis and so on. All of the odds add up to 100% or nearly 100%. If the market was perfect, then these figures up here would show 100%, but you notice that there's 0.8 over on this side and 0.8 under on this side. Why is it different? Well, that's the difference in spread between the back and lay prices. So you can see 246, 248, 3.3, 3.4, 3.7, 3.8. The difference in spread between those two is creating a difference in spread at the top of the market. And the spread is the difference between 101.6 minus 98.7. And that's what we call the spread, the difference between those two, two values. So the spread can be applicable as a book percentage or it can be applicable on an individual runner. So you can see the spread here is 2% two, uh, 2 between 252 and 254. Ah, now see there, can you see the book has slipped temporarily under 100%? Um, when that happens, people will go into the market and correct that situation. So the book always hunts 100% or as close to 100% as possible. To understand how this works, if you go to the Dutching or the bookmaking area on BetAngel, you can actually get an understanding of exactly how um, a book is constructed. So if we go um, to the Dutching area and we click on back, you can see that that's basically saying uh, you've selected odds of 252 so sing out loud we've selected the back odds at 252 and that represents 39.7 percent of the book now if you click another one the front two in this market are 66 percent of the book so what is happening here is the market is saying that it thinks that the front two runners here have a 66 percent chance of going on to win the race and this is where dutching can be particularly beneficial because if you're betting into a book that's close to 100 percent and you use more than one selection then you've got a pretty good chance of picking a winner and you're not going to lose much money in the spread. So let's select the third one. You can see the front three in this market have a 97.1% chance of winning this race. One of these front three is going to win, basically, is what the market is saying. And if we continue this process all the way down, then you can see eventually adds up to 100%. Now a quick way of doing that is if you just click on back, you can see, boom, there you go. It adds up to 100%. But of course, you know, if, if we select the lay price, then we'll get slightly different figures. So in fact, you could select all of the lay prices and you can see that it actually adds up to just under 100%. So in theory, if you could back the entire book at the current lay price, you would make a little bit of money. You'd make a 1% uh, margin. But of course, you'd have to wait for those orders to fill. And in the process of them filling, some of them may move and so on and so forth. So that becomes a bit of an issue. Um, but we do have the options to back at the current back price, back at the current lay price, or back at a manually nominated price. So let's have a look at what happens when you back at a, nom a nominated price. <coughs> First of all, I'm going to reset them to that level, and then we'll have a look at the manual price. This will allow you to understand how a market is formed, because if we look at the market and the price of the favourite starts to drift, can you see what happens to the book percentage? The book percentage starts to slip under 100%. So if this drifts out to odds of 276, this book percentage here is not a state that can exist in the market. Um, arbitrages will kick in, cross-matching will kick in when we're a bit closer to the off, um, and correct that situation. So if the price on something drifts, then the price on something else must be coming in. So because the front three in this market take up one third, uh, sorry, nearly all of the entire market, I, I was looking at the front three and thinking 
three divided by ten one-third anyway um, because these three take up the majority of the market if the price on the favorite drifts then the price on something else must come in so if we start adjusting the price here you can see if the favorite goes out to 276 then the price of Rotherhithe must come in to around 315 or maybe it just comes into around 3.6 and in fact it's something else that comes in a bit to help push that book percentage up. So in the way in which you see this, this um, is showing you the way that if the odds go out in one direction somewhere then the odds must change somewhere else. And this is the correlation that you see within the market. This is why the market meanders up and down um, at a variety of different prices within the market. So when you see this um, that's what's going on. If the book, if, if the price on something on these front three, if one of these front three starts to move in one direction, another one will have to correct in the other direction to, to be able to account for that. And the smaller the book is, uh, we're only, by uh, when I'm saying the smaller the book, the number of runners within the book, so this is only a six runner race, uh, the stronger that correlation is. If you've got a 20 or 30 runner race, there's a weak correlation there, but the smaller the field, the more likely that you will see prices move in opposite directions. Um, but by using the Dutching and the Bookmaking tab, you can actually identify and work out um, what that possible correlation could be and what prices need to be hit at certain points in order for the price to react somewhere else. So let's say that maybe, in fact, what happens is that the price on the favorite shortens. Maybe the price on the favorite shortens to 2.25. Um, you can see the books at 109%, which is unsustainable. We know it hunts 100%. So that would mean the price on these would have to drift. So let's push these prices out a bit more. You can see if the price on the favorite comes into 224, you can see the price on these other twos is going to have to move a fair bit in order to compensate for that. So playing around with this on different markets at different prices will give you a really good feel for how prices interact. Um, when you look at the, an entire market as opposed to just one individual runner. So probably the simplest way um, to understand this is to look at a football match because there are only three outcomes in a football match. The book percentage is going to be quite tight and we can actually examine what would happen at the start of the match. Um, you, it would make sense um, to be able to comprehend what's likely to happen in this match because Arsenal are playing away and if they don't score then the odds on Arsenal will drift and the price on the draw will come in. But of course the price on the draw coming in is what's making Arsenal drift. It's not necessarily that Arsenal are drifting, uh, it's just that the draw is getting more likely and the chance of an Arsenal win is getting less likely. Now I know from my experience in the markets that the price on this team, I was going to pronounce it, I'm not going to attempt to do that, will probably stay about the same or come in if there's no goal. So it's the drift on Arsenal that's taking place and the draw coming in. But you can now correlate exactly what the impact on one would have on the other. So let's say um, we're five minutes into the match and the draw, uh, sorry, the price on Arsenal has drifted to two. What is the price on the draw going to be? Let's have a look. It's going to be around 365. And if we get a little bit later into the match and Arsenal are 214, what's the price on the draw going to be? It will be around 325. And we only know that because we know uh, that if there's no goal, then the price on the home team isn't going to shift much. But of course, the draw and the price on Arsenal is going to have to move in the other direction. So around half time, maybe the draw will come into about 2.6. So I've just manually overtyped that. And we can just drift the price on Arsenal out to understand what price Arsenal would likely be if there was no goal by half time. They would be out to about 256. And perhaps the price on the home team has come in slightly because they have had a strong attacking phase. Then what you would find is that any movement on then coming in would send the price on Arsenal out. So if they're right, they have a lot of shots on target and so on and so forth, um, then the price on Arsenal will move just that little bit more. So um, anyhow, uh, hopefully that's given you an overview as to how prices correlate uh, when you're looking at them not in isolation but it, as a percentage of the entire book.